great. So again, welcome. Um, and Tanya is here and I'm going to get you the speaker view. Um, so Tanya is our Children's Integrated Services Coordinator and she uh, supervises the child care referral and child care financial aid programs. And um, she has been doing it for years and I thought she'd be a great resource for letting you all know what resources are out there for, um, for employees who are looking for childcare and uh, paying for childcare. So I will let you take it away. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks, I look exhausted. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Um, okay, perfect. So child care subsidy, our child care financial assistance is what it's officially called, is a resource for, um, I would say almost every single family at this point could qualify unless if you are making really a boatload of money. Um, I can go over the income guidelines for you, but it's a program where Families can access, it's voluntary for them to access, and if they are attending a licensed or a registered child care program, which includes after school or summer camp programs, they can um, apply for subsidy and utilize this money towards their weekly tuitions. The child care providers can bill directly online for it and get direct deposits, and then depending on whether or not the subsidy covers their entire copay, the family, or sorry, entire tuition, the family might then have a little bit of a copay left over that they would pay to the child care provider directly. So for a lot of families, it significantly reduces the child care cost for them um, from, you know, $350 a week, maybe down to $75 a week is what they would be paying, depending on where they fall with income guidelines. And so for some families, it's extremely helpful for them. And then we have the other spectrum of the families where because they make more money, um, it's not as helpful, but it is, you know, a little drop in the bucket that might help them, you know, with a little bit. Um, so, and like I said, they could use it for after school and summer camp programs as well. And it goes from six weeks, which is the youngest that a child could attend childcare, all the way up to age 13. Um, we do, we can do up to age 19 if the child or the teenager at that point has some extreme special needs where they are needing to be um, in a camp or in a program. So that way they are, you know, safe or they have some sort of medical need where they need to be in care while their parent is working or something like that. So there's a lot of flexibility in that aspect of it. Um, in order to qualify, you have to be a Vermont resident, you have to meet the income guidelines, then you have to meet the service needs, um, which is an approved activity during childcare hours. I've seen the majority of our families are working. That's their service need. If it's a two-parent family, both parents need to have a service need. The other ones are um, parent with special health needs. So if the parent had a medical need that they were addressing, whether it's mental health or physical, that could work. And that could be long-term or short-term. If the parent is working with reach up, that could work. Um, child special health needs. If the child has a medical or developmental health need that they need to be in child care for, we have parents could look for work to seeking employment, reach up, going off the top of my head right now. <laughs> um, they could be self-employed. They could um, be considered family support where the family has some extreme stressors going on in their life, which could include homelessness, domestic violence, substance abuse, some mental health things going on where it's better for the family to have their child in child care. And another big one is protective service. And so if the family has an open case with DCF Family Services, then they could authorize child care subsidy as well. Um, so those are the, a quick rundown of what the service need is. Of course, depending on the family and their situation, it looks a little bit different for everybody as far as the documentation that we need to gather. We put subsidy in place for one year and then we redetermine at the end of the year so everybody's on their own different timelines as far as that goes. Um, income guidelines is determined off of your household size. So I will give you, um, I don't know, it'd be more helpful, like the minimum and the maximum, I guess. Uh, so for a family of three or less, 
um, if you are making anything under $7,251 gross monthly, you would be eligible somewhere on the sliding fee scale for a family of three or less. For a family of four or less, it would be $8,750. Family of five be $10,249. And then a family of six or more, it would be $11,748 is what the guidelines look like right now. They will be changing in April and then again in October with the new child care bill that was just passed. So more families will be eligible for subsidy over the course of the next year. The goal is to get it up to 575% of the federal poverty line. Right now it's just at 350%. Um, so those are the income guidelines. And then depending on where the family falls within their household size and their income guidelines, they may or may not have what we call a family share or family copay, which they would pay directly to the child care provider. And then subsidy has what we call capped rates, which is what the state has determined to be the rate for a specific age child in a specific program. So for example, like an infant capped rate might look like um, for full time would be $349 is what the state would pay after the family pays their copay. And then if between those two numbers, the capped rate and the copay, if there is still a weekly tuition that the provider charges out of that, the family would then be responsible for that as well. So again, for every single family, every single program handles that a little bit differently. Some programs have different scholarships so that the provider or the um sorry, the families don't have to pay more than what we have determined their copay to be. So that's child care subsidy I'll and a quick, a question, real quick. I'm sorry. So the three when you're talking about um the infant care, three forty nine <laughs> a week is what the state will pay for infant care. Yeah. So if we take the example of say a family has a family share of fifty dollars, the family will pay fifty dollars first and then the subsidy will pay the difference between the 50 and the 349, which would be, I can't do the math in my head, it's early in the morning, um, but whatever that number would be. And then if the child care provides to say the provider charges $400 a week, the family would then be responsible for that little bit of a difference as well. And then to find child care is child care referral. We have a child care referral specialist, her name is Laura. And there's a couple different ways that people can access her. They can email her directly right at referral at winstonproudy.org. Or on our website, we have a job form that families can fill out. Or if they are working with a community partner, that partner could fill it out. So like a reach up worker, for example, they could fill out that survey form and then it gets sent directly to Laura and she will reach out to the family um, and then send them child care provider profiles of who has anticipated openings for what they're looking for in the area that they're looking for, which would be all of Wyndham County. And then it's up to the family to schedule those visits, call the programs, and then figure out what would be a good fit for them. That's subsidy and referral in a nutshell. Um, what are your questions? What do you need to know more of? Tanya, do, um, do you have a sense of what openings are right now? in terms of around like, yeah. What, who I, I don't. So I had asked Laura yesterday before I left and she had shown me where it was on the server and now I can't get on the server. I don't know what's going on. So I, my plan was to pull it up this morning. I know she's updating it this week. I have seen a couple people blast out that they have preschool openings right now throughout town. I don't think we have a lot of infant and toddler openings. Um, I would expect that we would have some after school openings though, starting as the school year goes. Um, usually Boys and Girls Club has a good chunk of openings at the beginning of the year. Yeah, what are the after school programs that accept financial assistance? Right, so Boys and Girls Club, which um, operates out of the Retreat Farm location right now is where the licensed um, after school program is. And then the Kids Club, which is for the older kids, which I think they need to be 
10 or 12 to go to um, the flat street location, which is not licensed. Um, and then we have the Y Aspire programs, which are operating out of Oak Grove Academy and Green Street schools right now. Um, those are our two licensed after school programs, so not a lot. We do have a couple um, home providers, so family child care providers, that will accept after school students into their program as well. And that varies throughout, you know, the different towns as to what they can take. Some of them, the bus can go directly to their home and drop them off. Other ones that the parents will need to figure out that transportation. Mm -hmm. Um, and that goes to age 13 for after school? Up to age 13, yeah. Okay. And how many, um, do a lot of people access after school or would you, is it is it a well-used program or is it? I think it is, yeah. We have a lot of families that access after school, especially as they start school, like the kindergarten, first grade, second grade children. Um, we have a lot of those families that come through. And then as they can move into like the Boys and Girls Club that um, is not licensed and they have a little bit more freedom in their program, they don't, the cost is so low at Boys and Girls Club that they don't need the subsidy for that. Um, so I'd say as they move close to 13, we have less and less, but we do have, you know, like probably kindergarten to third grade, we have a good chunk of after school families that come through. And then we do have a lot of families that access summer camps as well. And, and summer camp too is limited. We have um, camp does the YD camp up in Springfield, Vermont, and they will pick children up at various locations in Brattleboro and bust them up to Springfield for the day and then bust them back down. And then we have the Boys and Girls Club runs a summer camp program that's about I don't know, four to five weeks, I think, during the summer. Sometimes Hilltop Montessori runs a program, sometimes St. Michael's. Um, we do have some centers that will open up their program to what they call alumni or older siblings of the children that are currently in their program for summer camp. And then our family child care providers uh, are able to take on for additional school age children during the summer only. So they do get a lot of school age children then as well. Great. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, does anybody have questions about how financial assistance works or any um any feedback? Do you have employees that are trying to access the program? What are you seeing in the field that it would be good for us to know about um, in terms of either accessing the program or finding care? Just open it up for some questions and comments. Hey, Tanya, um, just one quick question. Um, you mentioned a lot of these seem to be in the Brattleboro area. Is there anything in any of the outlying towns far as just regular child care or after school summer camp? Both after school, child care. So we do, we cover all of Lincoln County. So we have, um, I'm replying, we have two out in Dover, um, summer, Halifax, Jamaica, um, a couple out in Vernon and Westminster. So scattered throughout. Um, we have a new program opening in Putney, which is exciting. Um, oh, what do you think of what's going on in Putney? Um, at the Putney Inn, open yet, but soon. There's a, so, I missed you there, Tanya. There's a program starting at the Putney Inn, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got cut off, Tanya. I didn't quite catch it all. I, um, I mean, so when it, we have um, three in Putney, and then we'll get a fourth in Putney. And then we do Marlborough, Jamaica, Halifax, Vernon. Okay. Are these um, school programs or just all around child care? All, all around child care. Our after school now are limited. I'm looking at my list. Are limited to Brattleboro and... That's it. 
unfortunately, uh, right now, unless it's home programs out in like Dumerson and Jamaica take school age children. For them, it depends on the age of the children that they have school day, whether or not they could take an additional school age children. Okay, thank you. Mona, do you have a question? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> um, couple questions. If we had someone coming in that was applying, but we, they knew they needed childcare, how long is the process if it's somebody just getting into the work field? You know, we're trying to get them employed and they're looking for childcare, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand. They can't start if they don't have childcare, but your process, you know, is it a month? Is it a couple weeks? Right, so it's kind of the chicken before the egg, which one comes first. And what we like to tell families is, um, like our regulations say we have 30 days and have an application from start to finish. So if we have a family that knows that they are starting work on September 1st, and they have childcare that's on September 1st, send your application in today because we have 30 days to get that. If they don't yet have childcare, but they know that they're gonna be in 30 days, I would say send it in right now. The catch is for those 30 days, if they haven't found childcare yet, we do have to close your file. No payments being made and we're not supposed to do that. Sometimes we can make exceptions probably looking and they just can't find a spot, um, but not often. Um, if we have a client that has um, the survey, um, we, you know, we need things like pay subs, but they don't have pay subs yet. So that we can give them for the employer to fill out for 30 days, which would kind of be like a placeholder for that. Um, but really, it's this 30 day window of when you're starting childcare that we have to work in. Um, kind of what it looks like. So, 30 days. So, in terms of getting subs, if they're applying for financial assistance, it takes you have 30 days to process the application and get assistance into place. 30 days. And we don't often take 30 days. Usually, we can get it done with them. Um, there are a couple cases where we have to run monitor, for example, to make sure we are processing the documentation correctly. So that takes a little bit longer because we, there are a couple applications where we need documents from the, and they are taking a while to get them back to us. And so that would delay the process. So if we get an application and it's completely complete and we don't need anything else, it's a lot faster do it you know within one to two weeks depending on the time of the year if we have to document or if we have to ask additional questions that we might take our full 30 days you know we have that time to do it and we're not doing it incorrectly that we're doing yeah um tanya unfortunately you are cutting in and out a little bit so i'm just gonna yeah i keep saying in stay unstable i know <laughs> i love living in vermont um, so yeah, P just, uh, what I hear you saying is there are lots of documents that people have to pull together to apply for financial assistance and depending on, um, how quickly those documents get in, there are things like pay stubs and tax, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff to pull together. So if it's all together, you can usually process in a couple of weeks, but it might mm -hmm. be all 30 days if documents are taking a long time. Right. Are your forms online on the Winston Prouty website? They're not direct. I think there's a link on the Winston Prouty website to the child website, which is where all the forms are located, where people can print out, they can print out the application that they need. And then as far as getting it to us, they get in a variety of different ways. They can drop it off, they can fax it, they can email it pictures and send us the pictures as long as we can read the pictures when we print them out 
if they're working with a community member, they can work with the you know community member about the application, and they can drop it off. They can come into our office and meet with us. We can um, whatever works for them. We will try to get done. Um, Liv, did you have a question? I feel like, or did she? Yeah, there you are. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, gather some information. I'm, I'm at Backroads Granola. Um, and so we do have uh, a variety of young mothers here, but I would say, you know, some of them live in New Hampshire. Um, so kind of everybody's coming from different spots. So they wouldn't, um, that wouldn't be applicable to them. So, uh, you know, there's a few local um, families that I can think of that could probably use the services, but I'm not sure. I, but I think also one of them might just move to Bellows Falls. So it's probably only one family that um, this would apply to at this point. Mm -hmm. um, if they're like living in Bells Falls and they're working down in Brattleboro, I mean, you can live in Vermont, you can access subsidy. It would just determine which office would process your application. Falls, they would go for, to the Springfield Area Parent Child Center and they would hold, um, but then if they're accessing, you know, say Mulberry Bush here in Brattleboro, they would some place in Mulberry Bush. Okay. Um, and we do have, I don't know which one, I've had a couple of child care providers that have accepted New Hampshire subsidy. Oh. So if you to call that child care provider and ask them directly if they can take New Hampshire subsidy, choose that subsidy. I think we've had a handful of those as well. Um, and then get it set up. And we also have, like, we have a couple of providers out in Keene and Walpole that that work over in Keene, so they're attending child care in Keene, but they're Vermont residents. We've been able to be in place in those programs as well. Okay. They just have to become like an out-of-state provider, mm -hmm. which is a whole other process. Right. Okay. So it's not totally off the off the market uh, possibility right. there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, child care financial assistance is a federal program, so every state has it. They might, you know, and it's pretty, I think, um, there might be different processes around it, but it's great to hear. I, I didn't know that we had providers who took New Hampshire. That's great, or and vice versa. So yeah. um, we're happy to help people try to figure that out if they need help with it. Mona, did you have another question? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Chloe, can I ask one quick question? Please. So from a um, so Dave Turrell from GS Precision, and I I guess I'm just wondering. So I was trying to take notes as you were talking, Tanya, and I I'm nowhere near as quick a writer as you are a talker. So is Sorry. there a, like you were going opening over openings and stuff like that? Is there a can you send out something that uh, kind of highlights the different areas, or if there's um, a site that I can direct people to that would have that information consolidated? Um, is that something you can do? Yeah, we could work and send out a uh, consolidated, you know, this is what we have right now as of this time open. Okay. I know she's gathering it actively like this week. She On Monday, she just sent out child care providers and she was going to follow up with them tomorrow. So I think by now, I have something for you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And then I guess the second part of it is, do you know of any um, employers? So we've talked about doing something on site for for child care and it uh, the endeavor was a, a much bigger lift than um, than it seemed like it would be uh, beneficial at the time. Um, do you have any employers that are subsidizing child care for their employees? If we wanted to do, do that as a benefit of working at GS Precision and say, Okay, we want to reserve three spots and we'll pay for them. Um, are other places doing stuff like that? Are people that offer child care services open to things like that? I, yeah, that's a great question, David. And yeah. definitely comes around, um, you know, em employers thinking about, oh, we should open a child care and then realizing that it's a really hard thing to do. And <laughs> um and yeah i i think that there are definitely people it's it, it, you know um interested in having that conversation and Liv, i think you came to our forum didn't you the the meeting that we had or um maybe your boss My, um coral i think that, yeah. yeah so um you know trying to figure that out i i think it would be a great conversation um to have locally and if you know 
the um so it, it yes i i think convening that kind of conversation would be great if there are other people interested in having it because it's definitely um i think the way and it's interesting the way financial assistance used to work is um there were every program had slots that were sort of open and families yeah. could come through i think it's a similar concept and if we could figure that out uh, i think that's a good way to approach it one of the challenges is so like right now as a program we have um six classrooms and only four of them are open because we can't find enough staff and so back to chicken and egg problems a little bit um you know, hopefully this investment in childcare will attract people to the field and we'll be able to increase capacity. And as we do that, I think the option of having um, employers who are interested in subsidizing becomes easier. So okay. uh, but at BMH, you, oh, go ahead, David, sorry. I was gonna say, do you partner with anybody where, so you said your your rates, do so you have um, at times uh, challenges meeting, like competing with Burger King or somebody like that. Do you, do you partner with anybody that says, okay, We'll subsidize your rates and get your rates up so you can get people through the door and open six classrooms instead of four. And then, you know, in and again, subsidize it in some way for our employees so then they can move their children there. Um, and and what my ask of it would be, I want to reserve, you know, X amount of spots. Do you do anything like that? Is that we've talked crazy? about it? <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it and, you know, happy to talk more about it. It just hasn't, okay. it right. hasn't come to happen. The <laughs> last time I, Last time the conversation came up, it was at, with BMH and it was about four years ago. <laughs> and they, okay. yeah, and you know, we just, it didn't, it didn't catch, but we've definitely talked about it. It's definitely a model that people are doing other places and we'd be, we'd be happy to talk about it. I'm sure other providers would too. So, um, so okay. yeah, let's, let's talk. Yeah, I would, I would be interested in it. And okay. it's, um, and it's one of those ones, like, I don't, I guess I don't know the size of the prize right now. So I may have two people that want to do it. I may have 50 people that want to do it. And I don't know because we haven't, I haven't had anything to ask people or survey folks saying that if we were to offer this, how many people are interested. So yeah. I think it goes back to your chicken and chicken and egg yeah. analogy of what, I don't know what we're looking at, but if we can kind of figure out what a framework could look like, we could survey our folks and then get a count. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. That's super exciting. I'd love to help figure that out if we can, because I think it's a good model for sure. Thank Do you. you do you have so uh are people experiencing this um you know the how much are you experiencing people can't come to work because of child care or people have turned down jobs because they don't have child care is that is that an active thing happening out there so i think there's there's two parts for us um so i i think there's a market of folks that probably are not searching for jobs because they they don't have it so i don't know what that segment would be we're, we're really flexible with our hours um, for working parents. Uh, we have capacity, but a lot of times it's, you know, it's either part-time and they're looking for full-time and it's, you know, things don't line up with their, their external commitments. Um, but so, so I think within our workforce, we're pretty flexible, but I think there's a segment of the population that's probably not looking or doesn't know. Um, so it, again, so selfishly, if we were to do something like that, I want to publicize that. I want to, you know, I want everyone to know that we're doing that. And as we move to be, you know, an employer of choice in this area, here are the different things that we offer. And then hopefully that will attract a different segment of the population to, to come work at GS Precision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. I, um, I am hopeful, um, you know, as we look at this, so the child care bill that passed is called Act 76. And as Tanya was saying, um, part of that bill is increasing the number of people who are eligible for financial aid, essentially. Um, and that, so that first increase will happen in April. And then, um, at, you know, there's a timeline in the bill. I should know it off the top of my head, but I don't. Um, and so I think as more people are eligible for something, sort of David, to your point, uh, if people know that that resource is there, they might it might help them sort of re-enter the the workforce if they know that they can get help paying for childcare. So um, I think that you know that marketing essentially of um, you know what's available and how can we help people understand what they what they might be able to um what benefits they can have and if we have enough capacity then people can enter the workforce so again it's like we 
our coalition really it actually switched from increasing capacity to just maintaining capacity because I don't know if you remember, but Mulberry Bush is the program at the retreat. It was going to close. So that wasn't, um, yeah, they ran that. So speaking of employers who had childcare on site, um, and we helped, our coalition sort of helped broker the switch to a, to somebody taking it over. So um, we just are focused on, we don't want to lose any capacity at all. And it'd be great, great to increase it. So um, hopefully this investment in childcare will, will get us there. Any other thoughts, comments, questions? All right, well, um, it, what, it is a lot of information to digest. It sounds like we might have a resource that we can send out. Tanya, you were saying there's some, uh, like a, you know, uh, pamphlet, I, I didn't catch what you said, it was a pamphlet or somebody who's pulling together some information that we can send out. Um, yeah, referral information, openings, yeah. Great, and, um, and if, you know, uh, if you have people who need help, send them our way. Uh, and if you have questions, feel free to be in touch. Um, it's really, uh, it's a, it's, it is a very complicated program. And so um, we, we're happy to help. We want people to use it. And, and actually, again, with the state investing in childcare, we anticipate more families uh, being able to use it. So um, you might be hearing more and more about encouraging people to apply for financial assistance for childcare. And hopefully we'll have the slots for them to <laughs> have their kids in. So all right. Great. Well I hope it's been helpful. Um and really be in touch with any questions. We're happy, happy to help. Anything about early childhood, if we don't do it, uh <laughs> we'll help you figure out where to go. So um, thanks so much and have a great day. Thanks, thanks Tanya. Bye. Bye.